Okay, so we're going to be solving simple equations, and the ones we're doing now are going to be the ones involving addition or subtraction. The, they are actually inverses of each other, so addition is the inverse operation of subtraction, and subtraction is the inverse operation of addition. So they're going to be useful in solving problems like x minus 7 equals negative 6. Now, in solving this problem, your goal is to isolate the variable and get x all by itself. Now the word solve is kind of almost like solving a puzzle. You're trying to figure out what that missing number is. Um, right now we can probably think about it and think, oh well 1 take away 7 is negative 6. Um, that's right, but we want to go through the process of how to apply inverse operations. But when we get to larger problems it'll be uh, requiring multiple steps, so we want to make sure we get the steps done. Uh, not just trying to guess it. So this is a subtraction of 7, and the opposite of subtracting is adding 7. Now not only can you see this as a subtraction, but sometimes students will see this as a negative 7, and also a negative 7 and a positive 7 will give us 0. And to see that, you add the opposite. A subtraction means you're adding the opposite. So two ways to look at this. Subtracting 7, the inverse operation is adding 7 or you have a negative 7, and when you add 7, you get 0. Uh, regardless, you want to make sure that you eliminate it and cancel it out. That becomes 0. And you're left with x on this side equaling negative 6 and a positive 7. We have more positives left. 6, 0 pairs, so now we have 1 is the final answer. Alright, now the next one. Y plus 3.4 equals 5 tenths. Now, we're also solving this, which means we're trying to find y, the value of y. So from what I have to where I need to go, um, I notice that the y no longer has a 3.4, which tells me that I need to eliminate that. So the 3.4 must go. It's being added to the y, so I'm going to subtract 3.4 or a positive 3.4, so you put a negative 3.4. Depends on your perspective. And now when I'm trying to total this up, I notice that I have more negatives than I do positives. So I know that I'm going to have negative as my answer left over, but how many negatives are left? So for that, you can do the difference between 3.4 and 0.5. You have to borrow will be 9 and 52. So it's negative 2.9. And we have y still on this side. That becomes 0. So negative 3.4 and a positive 3.4 is 0. So this y is still there. This answer is negative 2.9. So my final answer is negative 2.9. Now, you're probably wondering, why did I put this number first and make this negative when here it looks, shows that it's positive? Well, first I understand that I do have more negatives, so therefore my answer is going to be negative. Now, imagine you owe someone $3.40, but you only pay them $0.50. Cents. How do you figure out how much you still owe them? You take the three forty that you owe them, subtract what you already paid them, and you're left with $2.90 that you still owe. Therefore, I still owe, meaning it's negative. So that's putting it into perspective in the real world makes it a little bit easier to understand. The next problem, sometimes you have a fraction. So now we're trying to solve for D. The goal is to get D all alone on the left side, usually the side where it's at. That's where we want to keep it. So I have to reverse this subtraction of 1 fourth. Now the opposite of subtracting 1 fourth I know is adding 1 fourth. Or again, if you have this as a negative 1 fourth, then you want to put a positive 1 fourth. What you do to one side, you do to the other. Now I can put it under here, like I did over here. But when I do my fraction operations, I like to go horizontally across. So I'm going to add it over here. I know this will be 0, that D is still there. Now to do this operation, the rule is 
1 half, negative 1 half plus 1 fourth. Now, you have different denominators. That means halves and fourths are two different measurements. We need to make sure that the units are the same. So think of this as halves and fourths, like inches and feet, centimeters and meters. You want them to be in the same unit so that you can add them together. So halves and fourths are two different pizza slices, let's say. So what you do is you want to make sure that you get them to be the same. So if this pizza has four slices in it. I want this one to also have four slices. So to make this two become a four, you multiply by two. Now eating two slices out of a pizza that has four slices is the same as eating one slice out of a pizza that only has two slices. So we didn't really change the value, we just um, magnified the fraction. And you keep your denominator. Fourths plus fourths should still be fourths. And now I have negative two plus one gives me negative one. You want to write that as a decimal, negative 2,500. All right, and now the last one. Something like this. So pi is a number. It's represented by a symbol, but it really is a number. So this would be 6 times, we're approximated as 3.14. So this is still a number. So let's, I could tell the students, let's not discriminate against these types of numbers. We still want r to be all alone. Now notice, from r plus 6 pi to r, that means this guy is no longer there. So to eliminate that, it's being added to the r. So I'm going to subtract it from the r. Keep it balanced, do the same thing to both sides. 6 pi, take away 6 pi, reverses the operation, so we have nothing left. And on the right side, 2, subtract 6 pi. You have more negatives than you do positive, so your answer is going to be negative. And how many are left over? We have two zero pairs, so it's 4 pi left over. And we still have that r over here. So r equals 4 pi, negative 4 pi. All right, so that's how we solve um, one-step equations with addition and subtraction as the inverse operation, keeping the balance, equation balanced on both sides. You'll get your final answer.